Man, talk about a huge bounce back for the stock market in the second half of the day. Even though we had all the indexes go down except for the NASDAQ, we ended up closing on a pretty strong note, in my opinion. If you guys saw earlier in the day, we had the Russell down over 1.8% at one point, and it closed down about three quarters of a percent. I think the NASDAQ was down 0.8%. That closed up 0.2%. And we had the S&P and the Dow, I think. They were down about half a percent to 0.7%. And both of those pretty much broke even. So we saw a pretty nice bounce back in the second half of the day. And a lot of the red came in the morning after the CPI data, which we're going to break down in this video, plus some stocks and charts. You guys know the drill. So hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, and you might as well follow me on X at Stocks Talk Stocks. And you might as well get your free stocks from Moomoo up to 15 stocks, each up to $2,000. Use that link down below or go to stocksurfest.com slash Moomoo. Get your stocks. We'll talk more about that later, guys. And with that being said, cheers. Let's dive right into the video. So like I said, a lot of the bounce back came in the second half of the day as SPY went from around 472.20 all the way up to 476. So it rallied a good $4 there or about 0.8%. We had the NASDAQ in the same time period, roughly go up around, let's see, from 404 to about 409. That was a move of 1.2%. Big bounce back there in the second half of the day as the Russell, like I said, was down 1.8% and it only went down 0.7%. So it did rally a good 1.1% in the second half of the day as we had the good old Dow Jones go from 37.4 to about 37.7. Seven, it rallied 0.8% in the second half of the day. And you guys probably remember it was only a couple of hours ago. We got the CPI data this morning, and that is what ended up selling off or causing the sell-off here in the stock market. So let me actually pull that up very quickly now, guys, and run through this with you all, even though most of you probably already saw this. So I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we will look at it here very quickly. So bear with me, guys. So it looks like the consumer price index for all urban consumers increased 0.3% in December on a seasonally adjusted basis after rising 0.1% in November, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And over the last 12 months, the all items index increased 3.4% before the seasonal adjustment. And let's see what is core CPI looking like. It looks like here the index for all items Less food and energy rose 0.3% in December, the same monthly increase as in November. So it looks like that core CPI number stayed flat month over month as the, I guess, headline CPI number increased a little bit, as you guys will see here on this chart. Take a look here. This chart shows the one month percent change in CPI for all urban consu uh, consumers seasonally adjusted from December 22 to, of course, December 2000. And 23. And although we did see a big decline, uh, you know, we're seeing a decline essentially over time here. We did see a pretty big jump month over month and over the past two months. You guys can see in October, CPI, the headline number was at zero. Then in November, it was at 0.1. And again, in December, we just got a 0.3% print. So it is rising over the last couple of months, but it's still down from where it was in August and, of course, in September and a bunch of the months um, in 2023 for that matter. Um, and, of course, CPI is down massively from where it was uh, you know, a couple years ago, which overall the Fed has done a pretty good job, in my opinion. Now, is the, do you know, is the job done yet? Not necessarily, but they have done a pretty good job uh, to say the least. So let me run through these categories very quickly. I'm not going to go through every single one here because I don't want to spend too much time on this, guys. But let me see which ones made substantial moves in either direction month over uh, month over month. So it looks like here we did see an increase in energy commodities and in energy in general. It looks like in November for the month, energy went down 
2.3%, but then in December, it actually increased um, to 0.4% there. So big month over month increase in energy in general, pretty much in all the subcategories, except for fuel oil. Fuel oil was negative 2.7% in November, and in December, it was negative 5.5%. So that actually decreased, and I'm sure you guys have seen, um, you know, gas ha has gone down a good amount in pretty much every state. I'm sure, obviously, it's different in each state, but here in Jersey, it's at like 285 a gallon right now. Uh, I'm not sure where you guys are watching, but yeah, energy, um, you know, gasoline or fuel oil rather has come down a good amount. Let's see what other categories saw any moves. Looks like um, transportation services declined from 1.1% to 0.1%. All right. And a lot of these were pretty similar to what they were um, last month. It looks like new vehicles was 0.1% last month. Um, negative 0.1%, excuse me. And it just came in at 0.3%. So new vehicles coming up a little bit by the looks of it, guys. Used cars and trucks uh, dropped a bit. It was 1.6% in November. Now it was 0.5% in December. So not a crazy uh, drop or, or, or an increase in any of the categories. And if I come over here to Forex Factory very quickly, it looks like analysts were expecting 0.2% for that CPI number. That was the forecast for the headline number uh, on the monthly number. And it came in at 0.3%, so a bit hotter than expected. And it looks like the yearly number was projected at 3.2%. And it came in at 3.4%, which came in uh, hotter than expected again on the yearly number. So that's probably why we saw a bit of a sell-off here in the morning, guys. Uh, but then again, like I said, we did recover almost all of that loss except for the Russell, uh, which who knows, maybe that does recover tomorrow. But yeah, we recovered all the loss across most of the major indexes um, today, right? So we'll see if SPY could ultimately break past 478, whether it's tomorrow, that's a big spot, uh, or maybe at some point next week. That's kind of what I'm watching for, maybe for a shot to all-time highs. And Triple Q, let's pull that up quickly and see where we're at on the five-day, five-minute chart. Yeah, we're pretty much right near the highs now from the pre-market, 411 roughly. That spot needs to break for the bulls, and who knows, we might be going a lot higher uh, from there. So, yeah, it looks like we shook off the losses, rallied into close, which is awesome, and a bunch of individual stocks did the same thing. In fact, we had a bunch of stocks, big names, go up on the day. We had Netflix on the day go up 3%. Now it's trying to push back over 500 bucks. In fact, earlier in the day, it was over 500 bucks per share. It was at 503 at one point, it looks like, uh, which if I extend this or actually clear the drawing set first, let me draw this out, extend it all the way to the right. We can see if I do this as well, we can see now we're starting to break past this $500, 490 resistance. It's a big spot and we could start seeing even more upside uh, from here, earnings are coming up on Netflix, it looks like, in about a week, week and a half on the 23rd of this month. So keep your eyes on Netflix and CRM. Let me pull that up. That's Salesforce. Let me pull this up. This had a point, or not a point, two, uh, 2.7, quite the difference, 2.7% uh, green day today. It looks like we hit another fresh high on the four-hour chart. So CRM is absolutely ripping, guys. Uh, let's see, Tencent, TCEHY also had a pretty good day, although this is clearly still in a downtrend with really no signs of a reversal um, in sight. But Tencent, 2.7% green day. It looks like Nike is bouncing back slowly but surely as well, up about 2% on the day. We're slightly above the 50 SMA. Maybe now we do start running towards the 180 SMA at about 110 could be in this window right here. Uh, you know, that's where we could be going. So if that were to break 111, 110, where my alerts at, maybe we start running towards 117, but baby steps, guys, baby steps. We're not quite there uh, quite yet. So Nike had a pretty good day today. Let's see what else, guys. Adobe's pushing $600, man. And to think I was trying to buy this thing under $300, 
I'm a freaking fool, guys. I am an idiot. I should have bought this thing at 350. Heck, I should have bought it at 400 because now it's at 600. It's completely ran away from me. And what's the point of chasing it now? There's no need um, to FOMO into it as a long term position, at least. Uh, maybe as a trade, hey, if it starts breaking past, let's say 600, right by this 180 SMA on the four hour chart, we could be getting ready for the next leg up, but we're not seeing that anytime soon or not anytime soon, but we're not seeing that uh, quite yet. And we do have to break above, honestly, 605, 610 as well. That's a big spot from a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, ADBE, this actually looks pretty nice for a continuation play, uh, but not so much at this point for a long-term investment, at least in my opinion, just based off valuation. I think now it's, um, you know, it's just too overvalued. So for me, not worth it, but for you, it might be worth it. I don't know. I'm just talking to you guys from my personal perspective. I don't know. What do you guys think? And uh, yeah, with that being said, I guess we could wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. You might as well get up to 15 stocks for Moomoo as well. Why not? Fund your account at least 100 bucks. Using that link down below, you get five stocks. And once you fund your account at least $1,000, you get 10 more stocks totaling 15 stocks each up to two thousand dollars by the way guys so get on it up to 15 stocks each up to two thousand dollars for a moo use that link down below and with that being said guys cheers i'll catch you all later